Hello everyone and welcome back to Koala Craft Feed the Beast Amish Koala. Good news, I got a mundane larch and a silver lime sapling, so we are going to grow these guys up and see what exactly they look like. That's a silver lime and that is a mundane larch. The mundane larch looks like something you would see on like a haunted house. I don't know, it looks kind of cool and eerie. And the silver lime looks, I don't know, kind of like something you'd see chilling out in the desert, maybe? Alright, so let's go ahead and graft some of these leaves to make sure we get saplings back. There we go. Okay, and then we'll do the same here for our mundane larch. Ooh, it has like a nice inner pink color. Hmm. Alright, let's... Take a look-see, there we go. All right, and let's go ahead and graft some of these as well. Of course, I have a couple more saplings of these than I do of the silver lime. What do their planks look like? So the lime wood is very similar to an oak, and the larch is kind of this pleasant pink color. All right, interesting. So I will put these woods in here with the grafters. And I'll put these saplings in here. And now that we have silver lime, we should start working on the next tree, which is going to be the willow. No, it's not the willow. The willow, it's the hill cherry. And the hill cherry is oak or birch plus silver lime. So what I'm going to do is just replace the middle trees in these rows here with silver limes and that will be how we do some breedamifying. Okay, so now we have our silver limes in place and we can go ahead and get rid of these guys. I'll put you guys in here as well for now just to keep all of those consolidated and I'll put the bones in here since I don't need you and apples sure why not and it is night time we should go take a nice little nap here and get it to be day again ah oh, yes that was a beautiful nap I feel revived rejuvenated and ready to take on the day now, at some point, we are going to have to address these golem farms because they're going to overflow in the pretty near future, I believe. But right now, we can keep on focusing on our bees and all that goodness. We have a ton of royal jelly. We are about one-tenth of the way to having enough royal jelly to make an alviary. Yeah, someone corrected the way I pronounced it. I believe alviary is the right way, not alleviary. I think it's just alviary. Oh, there we go. More royal jelly. We are one step closer to said alviary. And do you have any royal jelly for us? No, you don't. Just dripping comb. That's fine. So yeah, uh, after the alviary and more royal jelly production, we really do need to try to get those experienced bees bred because they could be pretty awesome for us but we have so much so much other stuff I'd rather focus on the royal jelly right now rather than that but speaking of bees we're going to need to start processing all of our bees knees very soon because unprocessed knees are not very beesy so what I've done is up here I went ahead and flattened out this hilltop because if we're going to build a if we're going to have a place that does technology we don't want it to be necessarily near the farm I mean clearly we want it a reasonable distance nearby but we want it to be placed in such a way that it kinda looks abandoned so that way when the other Amish come by 
for Amish trade shows. They don't uh, try to stone me or send me to the gallows or hold a fake funeral because of the fact I've left them. So we are going to build a more uh, kind of a decrepit looking building up here. It's not going to be terribly big because it only has to hold the few the few forestry machines we'll need to do bee stuff to its full potential. So uh, let's go take a look at what type of materials we have. I'm thinking it's going to be a lot of stone and a lot of cobble and those are things we both have a lot of so that's that's good. Let's see here so I'm going to definitely grab a couple stacks of cobble and I believe I have I thought I had a bunch of stacks of like building blocks somewhere um, hmm. Oh right, here's all my smooth stone. Okay. So we're going to want some cobble walls. Take about a stack of them. Okay, well, I can't make a stack of cobble walls anyway. So I'll take some of those, and then I'm going to need stone bricks. And I'm also going to need stone brick steps. Okay, let's see, where did my stone go? All right, there we are, stack of stone brick steps, half a stack of stone brick. I'm going to need glass, which I have more of, or I should have more of. If not, I will be a sad koala face. Yep, there we go. That's plenty of glass, and wow, I, I cooked up a lot of glass, okay. So that's enough glass, and I'm also going to need a bunch of this larch wood because I think it will make really good support beams. All right, so <clears throat> up on the hillside, I was all prepared to start getting my building, and I really hadn't decided dimensions for it. I just decided to go up there, start building, and just kind of see what exactly I could come up with. My first attempt was far too skinny, but I originally made it wider. I was quite excited for this project because <clears throat> It was a break away from the normal kind of housey, Amish, cozy cottage-ness that we'd been doing in Amish Koala thus far. It was a chance to do something a little more stony, a little more decrepit, just kind of break out of the mold for a little while. And you know, change is always nice, you get to do something different, and my hope my hope was that this whole building could contain all of the machines and later you'll see actually the tanks as well because we will have to be storing honey and seed oil but large industrial tanks don't really seem to make sense on an Amish farm I want to save things for the Amish area such as library that will be holding our special ethnic bees that we'll use for mass enchantification. Oh yes, yes, mass enchantification. And actually, that's actually a good idea though. If you guys have any other suggestions for builds, because right now on my list I have the library for enchanting, I want to build a Amish Starbucks once I get the coffee bee. And I would also like to 
to build a uh, what is it what is it called uh, oh yes I would like to build a pub that specializes in mead because I know we can get mead from the bees so I have some neat ideas for things that would be fun to do but if you guys have any sort of Amish builds ideas go ahead and put them in the comments down below because I would love to hear them although with our current projects I think we're going to have our hands full for quite some time now you can see here I'm going a little bit overboard with the mundane larch wood I'm later going to replace those sideways logs with spruce wood just because you can see the logs from the inside and it didn't look good having the walls made out of mundane larch and I'm using the walls here on the, uh, well, walls. I'm using walls on the walls, wouldn't you know? Because I like the gaps it leaves in the walls. Not It makes it feel more open almost. And having that more open feel makes it seem as if it's a little more decrepit than it actually is. Now, I had some really fortunate luck in the sense that, I mean, if you look really closely in the bottom left corner there, you can see a zombie chilling out. But I really didn't have many mobs try to bother me. I had, I think maybe a creeper I had to take care of one time when I was running to get resources, but for the most part, building went pretty easily. And you can see, normally on my builds I like to have nice open windows, but this, since this was supposed to be a little more foreboding building, I went ahead and made all of the windows on it very small, and then I'm just adding these little, uh, you know, I have no idea what these things are called. They're like battlements or whatever the heck those stone ramparts are that, like, archers hide behind and they shoot out. But I'll go ahead and finish that, and we'll come back in first person perspective and work on those tanks that will be incorporated into the build that I was talking about. All right, now we're going to end up needing honey and seed oil. So what I'm doing is coming up here and we will build little little towers on this thing and those little towers will be for for the uh, seed oil and other oil whatever the heck it was called. Let's see here Let's do that, and then that, there we go, take these out, and then, ah, why does Larchwood place so strangely? I just don't, don't understand, you know, screw it, we're going with it, it's fine, except you place correctly, oh well. Too bad we already decided to go the other way. There we go. Now if I step back. Let's see here. Yep, okay. And then we'll want two more of these guys. That have like a radius of three. So if I come out here and do, and so that's one, two, three, four, do. One, two, three, four, do. One, two, three, four. Okay, and we'll take these out. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Curse you for going in the wrong place. All right, there we are. 
Okay, well, we're actually probably going to have to get rid of this guy here. To correctly get Xycraft tanks in place. Because that's what we're going to put here, Xycraft tanks for the said... <laughs> the said stuff. What is it? Seed oil and honey. Those are the two things we need. Seed oil and honey. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, this four by four area in the center is where the actual tank is going to be, but in order to try to make it look more tankish, I did this circular structure. So what I'm going to want to do is come up with the larch wood, however high I want to make the tank. Maybe five. Does five look good? Let's jump down here and see. Come on, Mr. Tree. And then if I put a little dome on it, yeah, that should be good. Okay. And let's see here. Let's convert some of these guys, this cobble guys, to steps. There we go, that looks good. Alright, so we'll come back up here. And one, two, three, four. Nope, I think I went one too high there. How tall is this? One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Two, four. One, two, three, four. And I think I put all my, yeah, I put all my glass back in a chest. So we'll have to go grab some more glass here for for these center pieces here, which will let you look in and see the contents of the tank. But aside from that, I'm going to use larch wood as kind of the tank walls, and I'm going to die here from fall damage, so I should mitigate the death of myself and actually eat something because no one likes a dead koala. Roadkill is just not fun to clean up. Alright, so there we can see it on the hill there and I'm running low on larch wood so I'm going to have to go collect more to finish it but I really like the way this turned out and I'm just going to finish this off camera really quickly and then we can get to some other fun digeri stuff. Okay, now that we've had a rest rooney we should go break some leaf aronis because there might be, oh, you know what? I may need to relog to get the different colored leaves to appear. So let's, why are you planted that? Holy fudge cakes, it's a flaming zombie of doom. Nope, 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 oh, we're trapped in our own fence. Okay, here we go. Yes, my name is Victory. Where'd you even come from, you little tree? What are you, mundane larch? Hmm, okay. So it looks like we only have one leaf to bash, but we will take it, and it appears just to be a silver birch. That is a shame, but that is also okay. Because we don't, you know, we have plenty of time to let the bees and the birds do their birdie beesness, and we can just wait, and wait, and wait, and wait and wait <laughs> but yes we should get our uh, thingamajiggies in do majiggery timmeriggery riggery gibberish is what i speak oh yeah oh yeah so i'm going to build the zycraft tank off camera inside of the two i don't know turrets on top of the abandoned building for the machines however we are having a resource shortage, whoopsie daisy. So I'm looking into making an arcane bore. So we're going to need a piston, a portable hole, a warded jar, a dispenser, some, okay, so this is actually pretty cheap. 
And on top of that, I'd also like to make a infernal furnace. Well, actually, we may hold off on the infernal furnace for now. I could do it. However, I would like to build a building for our smelting and stuff. And the infernal furnace is such a big structure, and when you break it, it spawns a blaze. So I really do not want to build an infernal furnace until we are ready to take the blaze on. However, where was I just... I was looking at... Right, there it is. The arcane boar looks completely reasonable to get done off camera here. And that can help us start collecting resources. Now I believe the arcane boar requires three things to function. The first is a wand of excavation placed in its leftmost inventory slot. Any enchantments applied to the wand also alter the functions of the boar. The wand will lose readability. As it would, it's a man minorly. Secondly, you need to place any kind of pickaxe in the rightmost slot. The material of the pickaxe will have little effect on the operation of the boar, but the greater the durability, the longer it will last. Like the wand, any enchantments or special abilities in the pickaxe will also be applied to whatever the boar mines. Lastly, the boar will require viz to operate, quite a lot of viz in fact. An arcane boar can only be placed on top or on bottom of an arcane boar base. Any items mind will be ejected from the base in the direction its nozzle is pointing. It will eject into an inventory if possible. This direction can be changed with a wand. Okay. So we might want to do this a little bit away from here since it uses a lot of viz. We don't want to create a ton of flux, but we do want to get that going. And I think that will be the perfect task to do next episode. Now there is there is one last thing I wanted to look into. So let me grab what I need for that, and then we will look into what I'm talking about. So the Dragos told me, I think that's who it was. Yeah, the Dragos um, said that Ethnic bees don't actually need flowers or anything to give you experience, and because of that, you cannot, they won't get po you won't get poisoned by them because of the fact that the hive isn't active, but that it would still give you experience. And I am not sure if that's true or not, so I'm going to stand here and see if I get levels. Alright, so I definitely wasn't getting experience from that. So let's go place the Ednik Bee over here where it can function and see if then it will poison me and start giving me experience. So we'll put you in there. This guy is obstructed. Let's fix that. Yeah, okay, let's just move you over by one because I'm too lazy to fix this. There we go. Okay, so it's in there now. And let's see if I start getting experience. Holy fudge cakes, that's fast. And I'm not being poisoned. Have I created an Ednik bee that doesn't poison me by accident? Either that or regeneration is canceling it out, I don't know. Wow, this is really fast. Best XP farm ever. What I should... Mm, I think I have some more Ednik Bees. Let me see here. By species. Ednik... Ednik... One, two... So yeah, I have an, enough Ednik Bees for three more... Three more hives. Hmm... One moment. Well, this is the best XP farm in the world ever. Now, I am getting poisoned again, but I do also have regeneration, and I want to see if I can figure out which one of these queens has poisoning. So let me take you out. Whoops. Okay, let me take you, you, and you out. Okay. So I'm going to put you back in and see if I get poisoned. doesn't appear like I am. Okay, 
Let me put you in and see if I get poisoned. All right, it doesn't appear like I am. And let me put you in and see if I get poisoned. Uh, yet again, it looks like I'm not being poisoned. I want to do a little more testing here. Okay, so this one definitely ended up poisoning me after I left it in there for a while. Maybe all of them do poison me, it's just random whether or not I get hit by the effect. So I'm going to do a little bit of more testing and I'll be back in a minute when I know. Okay, so it does appear like this one does not poison me at all. And let's put this guy in and wait and see if he poisons me. It's interesting because I can see little like poison particle effects coming out of it. Maybe that has something to do with it. If I put this bee in here, are there poison particle effects coming out of this hive? There aren't. Interesting. Okay, so this means this one will... Wait. Okay, so yeah, this one has those poison particle effects. If you guys... I'm not sure if you can tell in the video, but if you look really closely, there's like these little green droplets coming out of the alleviary. And in this one, there aren't those little green droplets. Yep, and I just got poisoned by this one. Interesting. Okay. So somehow these little green droplets equate to poison, which is really good to know. Now I'm going to put these little guys right in here for now, just so that I know. And I don't want to waste them. I want to keep them alive for when I'm near them to collect the experience. So that is a very interesting discovery. We now know that those particle effects coming out of the beehive will tell us that if we're going to get poisoned or not, which means we can start trying to breed some ethnic bees that don't poison us. Now I'm going to do one last relog and see if through all that I have any more leaves to collect. All right, it looks like we just got this one leaf here. It's just a silver birch. Okay, we'll just double check and make sure that there isn't anything else. Ooh, I found a one that was a hiding. Oh, you're just an apple oak, aren't you? Yep. Just a disappointing apple oak. Let's see here. Any other hidden leaves that I should know about or not know about? Either way, as long as there's leaves, I'd like to break them apart with a grafter and correct their goodness. Oh, yep, there's one right there. And you look to be the uh, mundane larch, it looks like. Let's see here. No, you're a silver lime. Okay. That's fine. I don't really need you anymore, but I'll take it. Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, I'll just put this silver lime in here with the other ones, and I'll put these boring saplings with their counterparts. And I think that this is going to be an episode, guys. Like I said, off camera, I'll go ahead and build the Zycraft tanks. And then we can work on getting all of our machines in there. So that we can start, uh, you know, crafting and constructing some awesomeness. We'll just get our nice little building here to load in the background. I don't think I'm going to build a path down from this to the village. Because it's supposed to be kind of its own isolated foreboding thing on the mountainside. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I think it's very productive. I'm going to go stick the ethnic bees out again and start trying to do some crazy enchantamifying. But until next time, guys, doodles.